We're going to do something a little different today in a series I'm going to call Why Buy It When You Can Build It Better For Less, or maybe, which we'll find out. Um, I needed a vacuum pump for some of the composites I'll be doing, and uh, after searching online, you can spend quite a lot on the order of like 1500 bucks for a decent vacuum. Um, I'm not doing this professionally, and the parts that I'll be building don't need to be structural. They're mostly just cosmetic, so um, I thought I could build something for significantly less and have pretty similar performance. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to go through today. The first thing I had to do was try to find a relatively inexpensive vacuum pump um, that could pull a pretty decent vacuum, and that's how I came across this one. Uh, I got it on sale for about 99 bucks, I think, um, and the reviews say it's good for about 26 or 27 inches of mercury, where a perfect vacuum is just about 30, so it's pretty good. Um, the disadvantage of this pump particularly is it can't be run continuously. Uh, they say it's good for about a half hour uh, and then things start to go south. So knowing that it can't be run continuously, um, but it still runs a good vacuum, I thought, um, well, if we can generate a storage tank, which is essentially these over here, um, that gives you some capacity. And then I need a way to regulate the pressure or the set point that I'm trying to go after um, and essentially just have the pump kick on if the vacuum drops below a certain level and then turn off once it gets back to the set point. Understanding those constraints, all that was left was to design a system that would adhere to them and build a frame that way could package it all up and make it portable. This right here is a vacuum controller. It senses the pressure and switches on the pump uh, given a certain set point that you can adjust here with this screw on top. They are readily available and about 40 bucks. But why do that when you can spend way more time designing and building your own? And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to start with an Arduino Nano. Uh, use a small pressure sensor with an eighth inch barb uh, to sense the pressure or vacuum in our tanks. And we'll display that value onto an LCD screen. Um, we'll be able to adjust that value with a small rotary knob, uh, which will also be displayed on the screen. And depending on the logic, we will trigger a relay that's going to start and stop our motor. This is exactly what that vacuum controller does, but has a couple extra bells and whistles that I think I'm going to like. It's always a good idea to map out the wiring before you start the project. Uh, in this case, we need to supply 5 volts to all the devices connect all the inputs and outputs and communication to the LCD screen, and add in an extra relay that I forgot about and didn't think I needed until now. Remember when I said I was gonna build it better and cheaper? Well, let's just pick one. Now, before I lose anyone because they're afraid of using microcontrollers and coding in C language, I want to share that this entire project was coded with ChatGDP. Uh, regardless of your opinion on how scary or dangerous this platform might be, it is massively powerful and makes coding in Arduino super simple. All you have to do is tell ChatGDP what you're trying to do and the things you're using to do it, and it literally takes care of the rest. It's super important to add a statement at the end of your text, asking ChatGDP to ask you as many questions as it needs to satisfy your request. In this case, I asked to write a program for an Arduino Nano using the Arduino IDE compiler, explain that I want to read a vacuum from an analog sensor, and control a pump based on a set point that will be controlled with an encoder knob. Uh, all that should be displayed on an LCD screen, and finally the motor for the vacuum will be controlled with a relay. And last, I asked GDP if it needs any clarification. And this is where the magic happens. It asked a few questions about the hardware and control logic, and bam, perfect code. Believe it or not, this compiled and ran the first try. I permanently soldered the Arduino to the prototype board, added the encoder, pressure transducer, and wired in my two relays and my LCD screen. It's important to note that you should always take a look at the data sheets for each component and wire it in the way they suggest. 
I'm doing one more final check to make sure everything works before I package it up and put it in the black box. And we're on to the pump. Right now, it functions by plugging into the wall and turns on and off with a physical switch. That's not what we want. I'm still gonna use the power coming in from the plug, but instead of having the switch control the vacuum pump, I'm gonna have the switch turn on and off the Arduino and then have the Arduino control the pump. This next one had me fooled for a minute. For some reason, a pump made in China uses British pipe thread, uh, which is very not standard, and I planned on using national pipe thread, NPT, for the rest of this project, so we had to find an adapter to make that work. You can put it all back together and almost say it looks like I know what I'm doing. Now that the hard stuff's out of the way, let's design a frame so we can put all this stuff together. For this, I'm using Onshape. I've tried every single free CAD software available and none of them come close to how user-friendly and powerful Onshape is. If you're looking to design something new or just learn CAD, I highly encourage you to go check out Onshape.com. Unfortunately, they are not the sponsor of this video, but if any of you have connections there and want to point them my way, I'd be happy to have a conversation. In the spirit of working smarter and not harder, I wanted to design the frame so that it kind of self-assembled and didn't require any fixturing. So that's what you see here. Each piece interlocks with another, and since I'll be using a CNC router with a round bit to cut these out of plywood, you can't cut square holes with round tools. So I'm adding in what the industry calls dog bones, which are essentially relief cuts so that the two pieces can fit together without interfering. Did I mention I loved Onshape yet? Well, here's another reason to. So within this application, you can install something called Kirimoto, which is a CAD CAM software, once again, free and super easy to use, where you can lay out your individual parts, add tabs, assign operations, and with a simple click of the button, it'll generate your G-code, which will go right into your machine. There's also an animate feature, so you can review all the tool paths and hopefully catch any mistakes before you do it in real life. As with all of my projects, mistakes were made. <laughs> During the first operation, I assigned the Z height of the machine to be slightly too low, and the tabs I was relying on keeping the part in place were cut way too thin, to the point to where they didn't do anything at all. That's kind of why you see me here holding the part in place and praying it doesn't shoot it across the room. I should have stopped and started over, but fortunately or unfortunately, everything turned out fine, further solidifying my overconfidence bias. After those first few parts were cut out, I stopped the machine, raised the Z height, and you can see here everything worked as planned. With the parts off the machine, I cut off all the tabs and used a razor knife to run around all the edges to clean them all up. And after a quick test fit, I applied a generous amount of wood glue and you can see that it all snaps together kind of like a Lego set. The only thing left to build were the two storage tanks that I'll be making from 3-inch PVC pipe. One quarter inch NTP to 3 8 barb is going to go into each end, and there's one additional hole for an eighth inch pressure tap. Let's see if we can't figure out how to make this thing work. I have power coming into the pump. Um, it goes through this switch, and then, as you saw earlier, I wired in this uh, three wire conduit. Um, essentially, I have just 110 power on either side, but I'm using this ground lead as um, the switched lead that's eventually gonna come back and go to the pump to turn it on. So power in, goes through a switch. We'll go through two relays, one for the pump and then one for um, our solenoid. So what's that solenoid for? Great question. 
Leaving a vacuum on the pump while it's turned off is a pretty bad idea. One, it's a source for a leak, uh, and two, it's just not good on the pump. So we need a way to relieve the pressure on the pump while it's turned off, while still maintaining the vacuum in the tank. The solenoid's gonna sit between the pump and the storage tank. While the pump and solenoid are off, it'll vent the pump to atmosphere and keeping the tank closed. And then when the pump and solenoid are on, it will connect the pump to the tank to pull a vacuum. So to go a little more depth, so this is just representing the box. Once again, our three wires. Um, and so this is kind of how we're gonna wire it up. Uh, black is our switched and then white is our common. Uh, so we'll have a black switched uh, going to our green out to the motor and then a black switched to our black out to our solenoid. Um, I hope that makes sense. I'll leave these in the video so you can check them out if you're more interested, but uh, that's the plan. And if I do it right, we'll keep the smoke in the box, which is a good thing. Oh, one more thing to mention. Uh, so for the Arduino, I needed uh, five volts to power it. So, um, I went and got one of the 10,000 um, Apple cubes that we have. It's a great 110 to five volt inverter. Um, and then I'm just gonna use a small USB um, cable to go from here into my uh, Arduino. And we'll wrap this up, make sure that uh, it doesn't short out or anything, but that makes a nice small package that I can put in this box. And, uh, and it's a really nice um, half volt or half amp um, five volt inverter for me. So that's how we'll power the Arduino and that'll do the five volt logic on the relays. And then we'll run the 110 in and out of the relays to power the solenoid and the, and the pump. Just a quick tip here. If you ever have a few wires that are going through the same route, it's always a good idea to chuck them up in a drill and spin them up real tight. That way they're neat, they're out of the way, and they won't uh, get tangled anywhere. It's best practice to only ever put one wire in each terminal. So since both of these relays use the same common, I'm just gonna bridge them with a wire on the relay board instead of having multiple wires go into the terminals. Let's hope I did this right. Experience only lets you know when you've made the same mistake twice. And I've got a lot of experience on first tries not working out so well. You can see just how apprehensive I am by the way I flipped this switch. The five second or so boot up sequence isn't helping things either. That scared the crap out of me. I left the dust cover on the exhaust of the pump and well, you can see what happened. Uh, of all things to go wrong, I will take this one again and again. Overall success. All right, that's it for all the wiring. I <clears throat> taped up all the high voltage stuff just to be extra safe, make sure nothing's gonna touch in there. Um, I'll put the cap on it, should be good to go. I'll mount this solenoid up here. I don't know which way yet, one way or another. Um, and then we'll do some piping. After that, should be ready to test. And there she is, all buttoned up. I added the tubing and zip tied all the connections. Overall, pretty stoked. And for one final rundown, the vacuum starts at the pump, goes through our solenoid, goes into the first of the two tanks, um, out the backside and into the second, and then finally comes out the front. Uh, you can also see the black tube, that's our pressure port. It goes into our controller and everything gets controlled from there.
As soon as the set point goes above the current pressure, the pump kicks on and kicks off again once the pressure is reached. It loses vacuum pretty slowly. I might go back with some plumber's putty and put it around all the fittings. I'm not too worried about it right now. There's also a safety built into the controller where if the pump ever runs for 30 minutes continuously, it'll shut down for an additional 15 minutes unless you push the encoder knob. So was I successful? Did I build it better for less? Was it worth it? Um, I think it was. I've got about 150 bucks in the motor and the controller, uh, about 10 or so hours of my time, but I consider that free just because I enjoy doing stuff like this. I would do that for free. Um, there's maybe another 60 or 70 bucks in the frame and the PVC and the fittings, but I'd need those regardless, whatever pump I ended up going with. Um, and I tweaked it. It's got my own little flavor to it. And, uh, and that's what I really enjoy. So for me, absolutely. Definitely worth it. I'd do it again. Um, I'm curious to see how it will actually perform when we start building some parts. So I hope you follow along for those. So we'll end it off there. Go build something cool. Never stop learning. And we'll see you on the next one.